Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James, thanks for stopping by. If you're new here and you're into the new DCU and the Batman Reevesverse, hit that subscribe button. We talk about it all the time here on the channel. We're hoping to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. And today, we got a whole truckload of stuff to talk about, so let's get right to it. Apocalyptic Horseman on Twitter had an AMA yesterday and answered a whole bunch of questions from tweeters and Xers alike, and these are things that I picked out that I want to talk about that I thought were very, very intriguing. First, let's start with the Batman Part 2 shooting in summer 2025, is according to Apocalyptic Horseman, saying that that's when they're looking to. It could change. We know that there have been delays, obviously. The script is not complete. And Robert Pattinson has signed on to Christopher Nolan's next sci-fi movie, but he's not going to have a major role in that, or he's going to have a supporting role, not a, not a lead. So his schedule is probably flexible and could do the Batman with that, but it's looking like the end of summer 2025. We know the release date is in October 2026, and I thought that was very very exciting to see that something, you know, while the Hollywood Reporter was making it sound like nothing was even close to being locked down, now we're hearing, you know, there's probably talks and conversations happening and they have an idea of when they want to start, but it's all probably dependent on the script and the script being complete and if they can get it to a place where they feel like they can begin shooting in summer 2025 at the end of the summer 2025, which also kind of surprised me. And I know, you know, you can have set deck and all that stuff, but I thought they would want to shoot closer to winter time to have a more of a realistic feel with the weather. But, you know, Hollywood's Hollywood. They're going to shoot the end of the summer. We know it's going to be winter, maybe Christmas time, maybe New Year's Eve, somewhere around there. A lot of rumors are, are really leading us to believe that Mr. Freeze will be in that one. We know that Scarecrow and Poison Ivy won't be there because he also went on to say on Twitter that Poison Ivy and Scarecrow were going to have shows and they've been nixed. There's nothing happening with those projects anymore. And this actually coincides, obviously, with the Julian Rush leak from a few weeks ago or from last week when we saw the Scarecrow glove and mask on Julian Rush's desk and fans were quick to say that he was the Scarecrow and we heard from Boba Tox that he heard that Theo Rossi was actually hired to play Jonathan Crane in the Batman show, in the Reeves vs. Batman, but that got changed. All of a sudden, Julian Rush came, became what Jonathan Crane was. They reworked the character. I mean, it's all very speculation, but that's all based on what they heard and what they were what the information that they were given. So it seems probably plausible that at one point it was going to be Dr. Jonathan Crane and somewhere along the line, the DCU, James Gunn and Matt Reeves kind of had a conversation. It was decided that no, let's not utilize Scarecrow in the Reeves verse because Scarecrow is probably going to have a bigger role in the DCU. You're thinking maybe Creature Commandos or Beyond. We know Clayface is going to be there and Clayface is going to get a movie. And also Horseman Apocalypse said the Clayface movie won't actually be Alan Tudyk. It won't be Alan Tudyk because they're looking for a Basil Carlo in his 20s. So we're going to get a 20-year-old Clayface, and there's a very young, probably an origin story here, because even though James Gunn said that characters like Superman and Batman won't get origin stories, these other characters, these, I mean, look, Clayface, I think diehard fans obviously know who Clayface is, probably even, you know, just fans uh, in general might have an idea of Clayface, but his origin story is one that's not mainstream, I would argue, so it makes sense to me that you would put Basil Carlo in an origin story, give him something like that, and then maybe this takes place like 10, 20 years before the DC events of the DCU kick off, because again, also in the DCU, superheroes and supervillains presumably exist in this world, and if they exist, then you know how they became who they are would have happened a decade, two decades, days, weeks, months, whatever it is, ago, so you're able, to, so it sort of affords you the opportunity to do something like that and tell origin stories of these villains, and we saw with the Penguin, we saw with that series that villain origin stories are very intriguing. Even the Joker, the first Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. We, we know that Sony, Sony, it's Sony, not you. Side Akbar, the holidays are coming up. It's Black Friday time. And if you're looking for a gift for a loved one, a friend, or a family member, check out Limelight Co. Candles. They are organic, no paraffins, coconut soy. You can get molds. You can get different scents. Check out the website. And if you promo code Black Friday 10, you'll get 10% off your order. So I thought that was all fascinating. I think we're going to get Scarecrow and definitely Poison Ivy in the DCU. I think Poison Ivy is ripe for that gun mentality mindset. I mean, whoever wants to tell that story, we don't know. There is no, uh, there's no script at the moment, according to Horseman Apocalypse as well. There's no Batman Brave and the Bold script. So it's not even that James Gunn isn't happy where it is. They just don't have it there. So either there's no rush to get to that movie or they're really trying to figure out what the story of that movie is. But again, you have Batman, you have the Reeves, Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson, Batman. Is there a rush to bring another Batman to the theater to, to really kind of 
to confuse fans. And we heard a few weeks ago that the rumor was that there was going to be, if you don't want to hear any spoilers for Creature Commandos, pause it right now and just wait. Uh, this is a minor spoiler, and it's, it's, it's just a rumor. I don't even know if it's real or not, but there is going to be a one, two, three. The shadow of the Batman is apparently you see that shadow in Creature Commandos. Now, I would say that this is probably an accurate leak, only because in the same leaker also said that you saw James Gunn in it, and James Gunn debunked that portion of the leak but did not debunk this portion. And James Gunn's really good at debunking things that aren't true or not accurate. So, again, who knows if that's real. But I like that idea, though, right? Because we're not going to get the Brave and the Bold for a while. And you sprinkle in Batman just, just hints of his existence around every once in a while. Just like the Penguin, right? The first episode, the last episode, you, you bookend it with Batman being mentioned. But he's not there. But you know the Batman exists in the world. And I think that's what they're going to do in the DCU until we get to him. And it's not that big of a deal because he's not even the main protagonist, right? We have Superman is probably your lead protagonist in the DC. So you, so you worry about that and Batman just kind of sprinkles that and obviously Rick Flagg Sr. is going to be the Nick Fury of the DCU he's obviously in Creature Commandos and Superman he's a big part of Peacemaker 2 which is very exciting that just wrapped filming also I'm really excited to see Peacemaker uh, season 2 and Rick Flagg and Peacemaker's dynamic in that knowing what Peacemaker has done to Rick Flagg Jr. and how they're going to work together because also you have to you got to take a hint that Peacemaker is going to be to play a big role in the DCU going forward because I think you know that first season especially like the movie I love the movie I thought it was a lot of fun but the first season of Peacemaker blew people away the ratings were massive everybody seemed to love it Peacemaker have you know elevated himself to I mean obviously he's not an A-list superhero but people love that character and to you know just shove him on HBO with that show while it's great you know you probably want to expand that role and have him in other things as well where he fits he's not a character that can fit into everything obviously but when you can utilize John Cena and Peacemaker you're going to want to do that so I love that they're going to play off of that in season two and I'm really really excited to see where that's going that apparently releases in the summer of 2025 which oh we gotta wait so long but Superman's coming up first and then Peacemaker so that's exciting and Lantern is going to be around the same time as Supergirl which leads me into the final thing I wanted to talk about today, and that is the Teen Titans movie looks to be the next DCU movie, according to Horseman Apocalypse, that's going to get greenlit over there. And it's from the same writer as Supergirl World of Tomorrow, so we know James Gunn is very happy with her work. Anna Naguara, I'm probably butchering it, but she did a really great job, a really great script apparently for Supergirl World of Tomorrow if we take James Gunn at his word. And you would you know, suspect that the same thing will happen with Teen Titans, someone who obviously knows the material, has a deep passion for the material. So I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen there. But it looks like Teen Titans is going to be the next one to be greenlit. Now my big question is, does Teen Titans connect it to the dynamic duo movie that was announced a few months ago or a couple months ago? does it is is that going to be dcu can and that's from james gunn and matt reeves and nobody really said anything it's an animated film with puppetry and cg and the, the studio that's making it looks phenomenal their work is incredible if you haven't seen it you got to check that stuff out so i'm really curious to see if those worlds are going to be related and i think when we get a voice cast for dynamic duo we'll probably have a better understanding of that but if we do that would mean that dick grayson and jason dodd are in the dcu which you can assume but you should never do that that they already are but this would this will definitely kind of showcase that and how we get into that and i would love to know because i think it would be a lot of fun to do that because you know animation to live action how is that going to play about and it could work and it could give us a first understanding of the characters and then we go into teen titans but it's really exciting that we're going to get something like teen titans right off the bat i know a lot of people might be a little skeptical like we need individual movies first or whatnot but i think it was a lot of fun you can really showcase those characters in that you know they did the show whatever you think of the show but it's an idea where you can bring these lesser known characters and you bring them together in, in, in a young form and we know the, the young avengers he also said in this one young avengers is being rewritten as champions it's going to be called it's not going to be a movie anymore it's going to be a series on disney plus which probably makes a lot of sense they're saying the the lack of success that the marvels had at the box office is why they're doing it this way which makes a lot of sense and disney seems to be a very reactionary company but i have a lot of faith in dc right now because it seems like james gunn has and peter safran have like full autonomy on what they're doing with their with their stuff right now and until they fail drastically it seems like warner brothers is kind of going to stay away from what they want they'll give notes obviously but james gunn and peter safran will, will stick stay the course i imagine and they seem to have a firm grip on what they're doing story comes first character comes first and this is what they're going to work on this is what we're going to get and that's why i think teen titans coming up next makes a lot of sense brave and the bold is what we'd all love to see 
but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen right away. And again, we can just, you know, we got Batman in the Reeves verse. We don't, you know, we can probably take a breath on the Brave and the Bull for now. But Teen Titans, maybe we get an introduction to Batman in the Teen Titans. I don't know. But I'm really curious to see what they're going to do there and how it's going to work out. And of course, Superman comes out this summer. And Supergirl is the one that I think I'm more curious about because we've only had one Supergirl movie. We had a TV show, obviously, animated stuff. But only one movie, Supergirl. And that was 40 years ago. So what are we going to get there? There's, you know, there's a lot you can play with, a lot of fun to be had. And that's not a character that a lot of fans are tired of. Fans might be tired of another Superman, another actor donning the cape, right? Maybe they're not with Supergirl. Maybe they're going to give Supergirl a chance. And if Superman is really good, if people really, if it really resonates with fans, that's going to bode well for Supergirl, which is going to bode well for the rest of the DCU. Also, if you haven't checked out Holy Christmas Batman from my friend Brian Royer, link in the description below. It is a jolly good time. Let me know what you guys think of all of these updates in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.